world in our eyes uh, explores the way that architects look at the city. Uh, in that sense, it is the way that architects uh, observe, represent, and also learn from the city and use that learning in uh, also their designs and in their, in their future work. Um, there are many projects um, in this exhibition, 36 projects um, with different points of view, different ways of looking, and they are organized uh, in different groups uh, according to these ways of looking. Yes, and we try to make a kind of very comprehensive survey of examples from many different places, so Asia, Europe, Latin America, North America, um, so how to see how the urban condition, that is how the majority of human uh, humanity is living, is being uh, inspiring for architects and is also a, a place of very intense political action because if you change the city and the territory, sometimes through design, sometimes through policy, it's possible somehow to have a positive impact on, on the lives of everyone. So architects have a certain knowledge and expertise in how to represent the city, so we wanted to uh, give a kind of broad understanding of these, these strategies. So we had uh, two years of research from which we extracted 36 projects. So each project is one author or a group of authors. And then we organize these according to some, uh, some themes. And the themes are seven. Uh, the urban fantastic, so somehow the projection of a future for the city. Uh, uh, the sprawl, so what happens in the suburb, in the kind of very diffuse city uh, that now is more and more uh, expanding from uh, the traditional cities of the past. Uh, vast geographies, what uh, architects observe and study when they how think of regions and very large territories, uh, structures and superstructures, so the possibility to understand the invisible, like uh, economics, politics, how that has an impact uh, on the way we live. Um, taxonomists, so people that instead do very precise catalogs of small fragments of the city, and if you put all of them together, you have a portrait of the city. And the last one uh, would be um, the representation of the everyday life in the spontaneous city. So in a certain way, citizens change the city and architects document how these transformations are happening somehow outside of their control. And actually there's one more, which is the predominance of geometry. So play, uh, some research that they think that the geometry of, the, of one place, of one city, is still very strong, uh, a kind of skeleton on which then you can uh, put transformation. One thing that uh, holds all of these, these works together is actually the way that architects make uh, the invisible visible. So how the city and the urban, uh, the, the urban matter is transforming and how we can represent those transformations and understand uh, the way that the city is transforming uh, through representation. And so these themes are organized uh, following a design that was produced by uh, a Portuguese Swiss office, Barra that established this kind of uh, assemblage of uh, circle and islands so as to generate these topics. And the material that the people will find uh, is a combination of models, drawings, videos. So we also wanted to show how the tools that are used by architects are very diverse. So there's not one, only one way of using architectural representation that you, you will see around it's uh, textile, it's drawing, it's axonometric, it's perspective, it's interviews, it's quite vast palette of, uh, of, of tools of representation. Yeah, we think architects have a capacity of, uh, I mean, they're not, they're not the only ones, and the most interesting project actually is where architects are collaborating with other experts, but we have a capacity of interpretation, and the tradition of architectural representation can be used Yes, to reveal this, this aspects of the city, also to a public that sometimes is not specialized. There are different, uh, I mean, of course there are different points of view, uh, some more positive, some more critical, um, but I think architects have a capacity to transform things into positive, and so even the more critical aspects or the more critical um, uh, issues that are brought up are still, I think, put in a positive uh, light. In that sense, what you mentioned about the politicians is, 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 is true. Uh, you know, um, I think, well, we think that architects have that capacity and maybe they've been marginalized uh, a little bit, um, but, but in the end, through these representations, they make things 
uh, appear uh, to a larger audience and so and, and so can involve also a larger audience in the decision making process. Yeah, actually, a, a lot of the things in the show you will not. I mean, people will notice they they generate discussion, they generate debate. So. <laughs> A very beautiful drawing is not just a beautiful drawing, it's something that people can start to have a conversation about. So we, we have, in that sense we're quite optimistic and we think that there might be a way to have architects again around the table producing these visions around which then you can somehow associate different cities. There are two cases, one in New Jersey, one in Rio de Janeiro, where exactly what architects have been doing is, is providing their expertise to generate conversation between citizens, politicians, uh, like uh, companies, uh, private, public, uh, public sector. So it, it's really the, the kind of like the visibility of what was on the table that uh, allowed people of very diverse uh, race, religion, uh, economy to be started to have a conversation together. So no, I would say that we were positive, positive. after <laughs> after two years of work. <laughs>